say real quickly, and then I want to open it up to some of you, but uh, first of all, there's nobody, in my opinion, that has been more supportive in college athletics of teaching the whole person, spiritually looking after our athletes, as well as competitively looking after them. And uh, when I help uh, Matt with recruiting or whatever, that's one of the things I am so proud of. There's no coach in the GSAC that does a better job. There's no coach that I know of where we as a ministry organization, I mean, I would rather be than uh, where we have the most supportive coach, coach of this ministry, Coach George, uh, to MAI, you've meant the world to us, to me personally. And uh, after 30 years of coaching, 17 of that being in wrestling, can you believe he tried to recruit me to wrestle? <laughs> I always thought he was a smart guy. <laughs> but anyway, um, but you know, Coach uh, had always wanted to be involved in ministry, always has been involved in ministry, and that culminated, I'm so thankful, in our last year of coaching together here, Coach, uh, because you guys set the standard for ministry in Okinawa, and as a result, we're invited back uh, to go. More importantly, you broke ground, you pioneered new ground for ministry, and so we're excited about that. Um, one other thing, I was at the Chamber of Commerce meeting, and I haven't trained all day, by the way, but... Uh, I, I had an interesting story. We were talking to a couple of the city councilmen, and uh, one of them said uh, something about, I introduced myself as, uh, you know, from the Seahorse, Southern California Seahorse is our new name, and mentioned that uh, we were going to be bringing a minor league, minor league soccer team to the community. And they said, oh, I've been involved with soccer over there by old Coach Orr. I said, yeah. We used to coach together, and our sons played together. In fact, I'll never forget the time Coach Orr got the red card. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Matt, tell me more about this one. <laughs> yeah, that's the only red card you ever got. And uh, can you imagine your coach seeing the red card and watching him walk off that field? Oh. Look it back? Yeah, and I'd buy that one. <laughs> anyway, that was interesting to hear today. But, uh, you know, we go back 30 years, and it's been a joy all those 30 years. We've cried together, we've laughed together, we've uh, griped together. <laughs> We've encouraged each other, we've encouraged others together, we toured Japan together. But tonight, uh, we've had uh, some things going on behind the scenes, and I'd like to introduce uh, Bill and Nicole Yovino at this time to make a special presentation. Nicole, you did a lot of work, but we'll let Bill. Are you glad to get out of that, Bill? <laughs> What we did realize about coaches is that there's definitely a legacy, and uh, that's what everybody's talking about, and that's what everybody's contributing to, that's what the seniors are telling you younger players about. And uh, we wanted to honor that, and uh, Coach, um, being the humble man he is, he just wanted to step aside and stuff, and we wanted to let people know. And we wanted to tell him how much we appreciate him, and all that kind of thing. And so uh, we put out letters to um, just about everybody that we could have a chance to do that to, and uh, gave them an opportunity to send back. Uh, kind of a scrapbook of, uh, of what you've meant to people. And uh, the letters are continually coming in. Uh, we didn't give them very much time in, uh, in the busy day to day life, um, but we have got a lot. Um, um, we put together a starting scrapbook here. Uh, there's about 30 plus in here, and they're still coming in. Um, and my wife has put together uh, pretty creatively and stuff, uh, different things. Um, some creative with the letters and things like that. Obviously, with the, the ones we continue to get, we're just going to give them to you. Um, and you can do it. I like that. <laughs> uh, but it's, um, it was a rare opportunity for me. Um, got to read stuff. I mean, there's some people in here that sent uh, signed clips of when they got married and uh, little notes and pictures and different things like that. Um, so if you get a chance uh, to see some of these things, from way back to wrestled with him and things like that. Um, so if you get a chance, uh, it's neat to look at the different things in here. Um, but I have the opportunity, I guess, to present you with this uh, to scrap them. At this time, for just a few minutes before we make one final presentation, I'd like to open up the mic to some of you who might uh, want to share a word or a memory or an embarrassing moment or a learning moment or a teaching moment uh, for Coach Orr. And if you'd like to come on up here and uh, share something.
heard my name right, so. <laughs> um, so it was kind of a different not being out with the guys this year, but I had to be involved as much as I could. But I think what was neat about being at Biola was that every year we'd have Hall of Fame and alumni. And I, I think we're like the only school that has that many people that care about the program and keep coming back year after year and keep telling their stories. And, it's, and they're interesting every year to me um, because and part of, most of it is because Coach has been here. And the stories aren't just about their teammates, but they're about Coach Orr and about how they try to deal with him in the weight room or on the field or his intensity. Um, but he gave us that opportunity here at Biola to not just grow as soccer players, but spiritually. And, you know, I have a teammate <coughs> here tonight that I graduated with, and we are a product of being under your leadership. And just thankful for that. And for all you guys, I'm, I'm sorry for you freshmen only getting experience one year. Um, but there's, you know, hopefully someone else can fill that position or your other uh, teammates and all being leadership in the community. But I just want to tell you how thankful I am. And uh, for all the guys that I've seen come through, the generation after generation who have been here, you have QC, who was here with you, and Stolt, who was a couple you know, years ahead of me. Ryan and myself and Phil and, and Matt and all, all the way down. I mean, we keep coming around because, I mean, we like by own soccer because of what you made it. You know, things happen so quickly. You know, you, you know, you're here for four years, you're done playing, you graduate, you go, you get married, you have a kid. As far as violence, wonderful. Um, I uh, I remember my first year here, and um, I'm hitting the weight room, and that was like my first real college experience. And so that's kind of when I got to see Coach Orr. I don't know what you want to call it, that's the word. <laughs> but um, and I remember him you know, yelling or saying, um, you know, when it hurts, don't give up. That's mm -hmm. your, you know, that's your growing period. That's the time, you know, when you are going to, you know, make that mental decision. You're going to go down or you're going to go up. And uh, cause there's no flat ground. And uh, I just want to let you know, Coach, that, um, you know, that you have given me such a great sense of, of spiritual discipline, I guess is the right word. And because um, you know it, it doesn't necessarily get a whole lot easier after Biola. Um, you know, you face life, you know, when it's really real. Some of you seniors still find out, you know, when you get married and when you're on your own, that um, you know, life gets difficult. And uh, you know, there's times when you stare life right in the eyes and you can say, Am I gonna give up or am I gonna go higher? And, um, and I just appreciate Coach Orr so much because you, know, you just instilled in me in the four years that you know when I stare life in the face and I've got that decision, man, am I gonna am I gonna do this the right way or am I just gonna take the easy way out? And um, you know, I always come back to those bio days where you just you say, you know what? I'm gonna have discipline and I'm gonna do it the right way. And you know, I'm like Mike was saying, you freshmen, I mean I feel <laughs> you should be grateful because you've had a year under Coach Orr. Um, but I do feel bad because you're going to be missing out um, as far as what I've experienced. And, um, and I know Matt and Trump can say the same, you know, some similar things with me. Um, but you know, you've been such a blessing in my life. And I just appreciate you so much.
my daughter, I just try to live up to that. And it's awesome. I remember uh, spending 12 or 13 years and uh, one of those early halftime talks, I think it was after Ross, and I uh, don't remember where, but uh, I remember you saying something along the lines that if we keep our eyes focused on Christ, the team, the soccer team, works as a family unit. If they're all focused on the same goal, you're going to reach the prize. And, uh, I just want to thank you for the year we've had together. Want anything more? Thank you, Coach Dora, for giving me the opportunity to come to my left. Not many coaches in the world have given me the opportunity as I teach nine coaches. All I thought about was soccer. I did my, I, I did well in school, I could grade, I did everything good. And I was not bad of a person, but all I thought about was soccer, soccer, this, soccer, that. And it wasn't until I came to my because I feel like the Lord needs Coach Dora as a um, mediator to bring me here to my to, to pull me to actual meaning in life and the purpose. And when I first came to Biola, I wasn't a Christian. Actually, I, I, I was a non-believer. I didn't believe in anything. I, I just knew that there was a God, but that was it. I, I never read the Bible in my life. Um, so, first, I mean, I, once again, when I start such a talk, I thank you so much for giving me the opportunity come to my own life and make a better person of myself. And as I look back, like these two years of playing for you, I said, I didn't like you. I <laughs> 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 tough coach. And all the coaches I liked, I liked because they were easy on me, they were immediate, flexible, coach held down my face. <laughs> coaches always get on my face about anything everything because you wanted me to be a better person, to be a better soccer player. So more, more than soccer, once again, I wanted me to be a better person. If I had a problem, I, I spoke to him when I first came to Biola, I had a huge breakup. And I didn't know who to talk to, so I, I spoke to Coach Joe. And he just pulled me to the side. I was after practice, I told him he had a minute, he said, sure. He sat down and I told him my problem. And coach is all like, well, I don't, do, I don't know what to do. You can just pray. I'm all like, good answer, coach. I'm like, I need your help. I've like, never practiced praying in my life. I never actually thought about how important his advice was. And so I actually, like, I just walked away from Coach Joy and I'm all like, I think I came to the wrong person. <laughs> but, it just stayed in my head, just pray and just pray. That's the only thing that Coach told me, to pray and ask the Lord for His will to work upon me. So I did it. And it was a life changing event. It, it put prayer in my life. And now I got to witness like the power of prayer, who, who God really is. And now that I started coaching too, it was last year in my own high school, fourth in high school. And I put all the time in. It just, it, it's so much that sometimes you don't know what to do, you just take so much of the time in, and it's like a humbling thing to do. And I, I appreciate every little thing that you did, every little talk that you had with me and the rest of the team, it's just so inspiring, because that's what I want to do with my life, you know. I'm, maybe not here, but I would love to be the next coach, or maybe not here at Biola, but at some other school. And, and if Lord brings me here, then here's my will, will be done. But, I, one of my goals is to be the next coach or some some guy. Cause I, I don't think like I'm ready. I'm just my second year coaching, and most of the guys and since out of that we all hold like Christ as a huge person in our in our lives, and we like share to like people about him. We like share who he is about his love, and I I I, I do that too. But I also share coach or many people don't know who what what you look like who you are, but they know like 
Kung Fu Tour and when I make them do the high knees and tennis squats, all this sprints and they start whining and you know, and they tell me like, where, where did you come up with these dumb drills, Coach? Oh, uh, Coach Or. <laughs> I always stop practicing. And I, I can see how my boys are changing a lot too. Nah, you made me want to be that person, how you make an impact in our lives. That's what I want to do in my life. I, I want to impact a lot of people in my life. But it all started with you. You just changed my life with the opportunity. I was just, being, I was just trying to be um, a disciple of Christ and not just a coach to seek your own selfish goals and selfish desires, but you, you try to help us fulfill all of our goals and all of our desires during school. And uh, academically and in athletics also. And I'm really grateful for that. And um, one of the things that I remember, one of the stories, we, we were in like the weight room and each time we, we'd be tired, you know, we'd go to, um, I think, two or three circuits. First one is okay, second one is not struggling. Third one, we don't want to do anything. We just want to look in the coach door. Hope he's not looking. He's standing. Coach Stutter just start going to the door. Just, just yell so Coach will feel like he's doing something. <laughs> but, um, one of the things that he said, each and every single time Coach spoke to us, he, he spoke about God's love and what he did for us. Every single time. And it always brought a smile to my face, too if I was tired or not, or if the whole team was tired. It still brought a smile to my face. Just when he went and made his doctor in life to God, to his love, every single time. And when we were in pain, he'd say, you know, like, why, why did you guys stop? When Christ put himself on the cross by his own will, he didn't have to be in the cross, but he still did. And he had put himself in, in, on that cross for us, for his love. And he punished himself. So why can't we do the same for him when we're in pain, where you know, with the circuits we're out there struggling to get the bar up? And that's when it's all mental then. It's all about our love that we have for him. We, we have to thank him back for all he did for us. And yet we um, can never do it. But we um, can try to do it with our actions in, in, in the way that when we're struggling to. I love Jesus and just pick it up. And, and Coach George taught me that. I put myself to pain. And to show, you know, love that, that we have to Christ the way he died for us. And it's just amazing. You're, you're, you're more than a blessing and an inspiration that I just cannot. Right, and I can just stay up here talking forever, but I think you guys probably want to say something to me. But I do want to thank you. And I hope that we just will get in touch some time with you. With you. Give me some great advice. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I truly want to thank you for that. You're just an amazing person. And I hopefully someday would want to be next to us. Thanks. We'll keep the mic open in just a couple more minutes. And uh, frankly, this is open to you parents, too. And if you parents never had the opportunity or privilege of being in a halftime huddle or a post-practice talk, you just, you know, listen to Coach or you say, where does this guy come up with this stuff? It's incredible, but it's li it is lifelong impact if you remember those talks. But uh, we'll get a couple more minutes here. It's 9.07. We've got about three minutes. If anyone else would like to share, come on up and go for it. Let's keep it short. And then we have uh, one short uh, letter to read. It's too short because the last time Japan I talked for about 30 minutes. <laughs> Forget about that. No, uh, I just want to share something how Coach is, uh, Coach, you can, uh, he's taught me so much as I've been here. Um, growing up, through all the way through high school, um, everything came easy to me, like sports, school, and everything. And when I got to college, um, soccer didn't come easy anymore. I think the first day, um, I was the first one puking. Um, and then the second day, I was the first one puking again. <laughs> And then uh, I think a couple other times, second semester, first day I was puking again. Um, and I think ever since I've been here, um, added all together, I think I've puked more than everyone here in the whole room. Um, but uh, ever since I got here, Coach Orr has just good pushed me to another level. And, uh, and he's taught me that I'm not going to reach that goal unless, 
and like I I suffer for it, just like just like you said, just like Christ did, you know. And uh, this year um, was my third year playing for coach, and um, the last two years I can say that he's prepared me so much for life because this year um, this year I've been a lot on my own. Um, my parents haven't supported me um, hardly at all. Um, I've been working um, throughout the semester through soccer season. I was working. I was a um, I was up at 6 a.m. on Saturday mornings working before our soccer game, um, doing my job here for school, and uh, and now I'm coaching the soccer team too. And I think this semester has um, brought so many trials to me um, that that has pushed me to another level. And I don't and I don't think I would be able to do it without Coach Orr um, teaching me in the last two years that that when it gets hard, you just push yourself and you prepare yourself and and you step to the next level. And, and I think that. Coach Orr has taught me um, how to be a man since I've been here because I realized this year, this year is going to be easy compared to when I have a family and kids. And I'm always going to remember back to the times when I was in the weight room and Coach Orr was pushing us at 7 in the morning. And, uh, and I'm puking and then Coach Orr says, end line, you know? Um, so, Coach, I just, I just thank you so much because the things you taught me on the soccer field are things that I'm going to carry out through life and things that I'm going to carry out for the rest of my life. And, uh, and I hope that the rest of you guys say the same thing. Thanks a lot, Coach. Uh, I remember the first day I came in and I sat down in the P7. And I sat there and I was still unsure if this was the right school. I never know until you get way into it. And we sat down and, uh, and uh, we're talking. We're going to do the spot by run and, and Coach starts to preached and taught, and uh, then we prayed, and uh, when we started to pray, I knew that I was in the right spot. I got above me the right spot, and this is where I was supposed to be for next four years. And I'm just uh, very grateful to Coach for doing that. And, and more than the discipline aspect that you bring, I don't know you guys talk about it, uh, you brought a new love for soccer team, and uh, I enjoyed the sport, and you know, you're used to winning, like James said, coming very successful, and you could play in college because you've been successful in high school. And so to come and, and you know, have a 10 10 season first year, it's like, whoa, wait a second, what's going on? It's not fun anymore. You know, we're supposed to win. And uh, and Coach brought this new aspect that I can glorify God and I can worship at that play and so much more. And so it helped me keep going and look past the win into my effort on the field. And I could, you know, the season, uh, as it wasn't as great as we wanted it to be, it was definitely a success that I put forth all my effort. And, and, and it was an act of worship for me. And so Coach really taught me that. I'm very grateful for that. Uh, I was just sitting there thinking of the first thing in my mind. Um, the first one is the Lord disciplines those he loves. And uh, I think Coach Lord knows that. And uh, as, as, as our leader, he disciplined us. And uh, I realized that's the first time we lost to Fresno. After the game, he took us to the baseball field and showed us how much more we had inside of us. <laughs> as a number guy. But, um, you know, and, uh, and you realize that he gets you through this and uh, he takes you through four years of soccer through um, the discipline you know, to show you that, you know, I, I was the type of person that I would like to give more than, than I had, you know, I had to deserve it, you know, and, and learn to deserve it because you never know if there would be more <laughs> the coach or the end of the practice and outside the <laughs> Finally understanding what total release is, you know, it's, don't say anything, you know, you should be crawling off that field. And the same goes in life, you know, don't say anything, don't, don't reserve anything. If, if you have something in you, you know, give it your all, um, you know, and, and endure and persevere. And that's the verse that I thought of that, that reminds me of Coach Roar. Um, just consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of any kind, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance makes finished its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And, uh, and uh, it goes on to say, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God to give generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. And I know Coach George is one who, who seeks God regularly, and uh, he seeks God's wisdom in, in everything. And he taught me that, and I think he taught you guys that as well. And, uh, and it's about perseverance, and it's about enduring. And, and uh, he protect, protected us, and, and I never realized um, a lot of the struggles he faced with the, the athletic department and, and uh, just being kind of on staff, he kind of shared with me a lot more of um, all those things. 
put extra effort into those and enduring and persevering just to create this atmosphere for us in Final Soccer. And it's just been a, a special time. And, uh, and for me, um, I learned what this point is. I learned what perseverance is and, and uh, total relief that this uh, is something I'll take with me the rest of my life with my family and, and uh, in our ministry with MAI. Thank you for that. Um, last year, as the season came to an end, it was kind of sad that everything was finished, but uh, it was awesome to be able to be part of recruiting. A lot of you guys are here. Um, it's fun to be on the phone with you guys and be part of that and go to Japan with you guys. But um, uh, just what what I remember most is just coming when I was checking out schools was uh, I was hitting uh, SCC and Biola in the same visit. So first I was at SEC watching their game, and it just happened that I sat next to uh, uh, the coach's wife, McLeish's wife, and the whole game, she was just sitting right by us, and, and she was just annoying and loud, and, it was, and we just happened to beat her, and it was just a shock that she was this lady. And so after the game, we went down and talked to uh, talked to the coach, and uh, I mean, he, his attitude, and it was just it was just a shock. He's like, "Yeah, hi, how you doing? Okay, yeah, please come and be good to have you." And stuff. And it was just a shock, and and the whole time, both of them just talked about their son the whole time, and it was just uh, it was just amazing. And then so the next day, we we caught uh, Biola's game, and it was it was by coincidence we were sitting in the stands, and we sat right by Pat. And just by chance, then we started talking with her, and it was just a complete change. And and then after the game, they talked with Coach, and I mean, just a total change in talking with the, their personalities. And you know, first question off the bat with, with the after players is, you know, are you a Christian? Do you believe in the Lord? And I mean, it was just complete difference. And uh, I don't know, and it was just amazing to sit by Pat and to see because I mean, to know that the wife that he goes home to is, you know, a big part of who the man is that's going to be coaching me the next four years and who my parents are going to entrust me with for the next four years of my life. So that meant a lot. And doing a lot of recruiting, I mean, I think that's why I enjoy it so much is that I get to share how much Biola is different compared to these other schools. And it's hard to tell these parents, but I try to tell them. I'm not trying to put down these other schools, but there really is a different aspect to it. And I don't know, as Mike knows from Azusa, I mean, it is different, and it's hard to explain to people and tell them how special it is here. And it's been great to be under your leadership these last couple of years, and uh, great to be with you. So, good luck to Is that your recruiting skill? <laughs> um, well, I wasn't going to say anything but then he, um, he studied Zusa and um, <laughs> so I kind of thought I needed to come up here because sometimes, you know, it's really easy to live your Christian life when things are going your way in front of other Christians and you know, you can just go along and say, things are great, praise God, everything is wonderful. But then, you know, when something doesn't go your way, um, it's kind of where the rubber meets the road. And I think one of the things that, um, when we got the, le the letter about sending memorabilia, I looked real hard for this note that we received from Coach Orr, but Mike, his freshman year, decided to um, go to another school, and Coach Orr called, and, you know, he had to tell him that, and, and I'm sure that it didn't make him the happiest person in the world. But... A couple of days later, in the mail, we received a, Mike received a personal letter from him, from Coach, um, thanking him for you know the recruiting process and wishing him well where God had called him. And to me, you know, that's where your Christian life is. You know, is when things aren't going just exactly the way you want them to go. Are you going to walk with God? Is your testimony going to show? And that's you know one of the things that we learned from being involved in, with Coach Orr, and then, you know, to be able to come to Biola and, and be under his ministry, it's just made that all the more true. So I just thank you. You know, sometimes you have a ministry with people that you don't even know, and I just wanted to share that because I thought that it was a really important thing that you did that nobody would ever know about. So thank you very much.
think from a um, parent's perspective, if you love your child as much as I love Jim and Lily, I can tell you when you put your, or especially for the freshmen, when you put your faith and your trust in somebody like these two lovely people here, you know that God is, a, is alive and working in your life. I've been raised in a Christian home all my life. One of the real beauties that God gave me was the gift of discernment. And from the first time that Matt and I met, um, it was quite clear where Jay was going to go to school. I didn't know how. We didn't plan on it. We didn't recruit a lot. We didn't do a lot of other things. Uh, Jay did leave school, went back to Fresno State. And one of the real blessings in our life was him recognizing that when he called the coach to come back, of course the coach was more than willing and happy to have him come back, didn't go through a big ordeal with him. But one thing I asked Jay when he conveyed his choice of, of coming back to Viola was the fact that for those of you who he's had the pleasure of playing with, he said, Dad, it is so different. It is such a different atmosphere that everybody pulls for everybody, not one against the other, so you truly play as a team, and I think that speaks so well of Matt. Uh, coming out of a winning program, it's been a difficult four years for this dad. Uh, we make a lot of trips to L.A., uh, but we make trips because God taught me a long time ago, commitment's 110%. I can't expect any more out of Matt and Jay than I can out of putting it out for myself. One of Matt's greatest attributes, and I know he knows this like myself, and that is the partner that God has put in his life. Tremendous, tremendous, tremendous from the time that Jay stepped on the campus with some illnesses. Um, yeah, Matt was there, but we know that Pat was the real strong arm and assistance and the mom away from home. So. The toughest challenge in the world is raising children. The greatest challenge, not that it's hard or it's difficult, it is, but the greatest challenge is introducing them and showing them a Christian way of life. And I can say this with all, uh, without reserve, that one person that God chose to continue my rearing of my son was Matt and Pat Orr, and I'm thankful for that tonight. Thank you. I'm sure some of the rest of you have some things you want to say. And you know, it's like when the preacher's doing well, you don't stop the message. And man, I'm sure there's some things you will enjoy reading through the booklet. But I'd like to read for you a letter here and make a short presentation. And uh, this is to Matt and Pat Orr. And I think it's been very obvious uh, with everyone sharing that uh, Pat, you are involved in this as Matt. And on behalf of the Biola University soccer community, I have the privilege of thanking you for your commitment to so many of us for the past 14 years at soccer and 17 of wrestling, of course, coaching at Biola. We recognize this commitment was made possible by a support system behind the scenes. Yeah, that's Pat. We also have all had the privilege of being in the Orr family home on various occasions. God has been gracious to us to see a couple still in love after knowing how much was sacrificed in the home, on the home front. Coaching is a tough job. Thanks for sharing your family with us. And all your boys and girls, we know what you've given up sometimes. We, we have a gift here that is brought to you by the year 2000 men's soccer team, their parents, alumni, the athletic staff, from your coaches, and many who are the beneficiaries of your commitment to God's purpose through the game that we love. As you know, as we know, you love to putz around the home during down times. It's always fun to go in and watch a painting or fixing breaks or something. And as we know that God has spared your lovely bride this past year, we want to help you smell the roses after over 30 years of coaching by own university teams. We have collected $1,300, which can only be used 
to pay the Travels Unlimited travel agency for a cruise of your choice. Your job is to meet with Gina Ladner, the travel agent, and select a date and destination for this cruise. There may be additional money that continue to come in over the next few days, and that will be given to you as a cash gift to be used for wine and dining your special lady. Please, <laughs> please accept this gift as a token of our appreciation for so many years of service to our Lord and through serving each of us. Blessings, your soccer family. And there's a copy of that letter in here. And uh, in here also is uh, Alpha San Lucas and the uh, travel guide that you guys will need to look through. And uh, Mrs. Gizzy, Vicki will be uh, uh, taking care of the financial end of things as soon as you make a decision. So. Yeah. Yeah. Brad, I, I would ask that Brad pray for Matt and Pat, and then also pray for the new coach that God brings to Biola, because there's an incredible legacy that needs to go on, and we all know the issues of the courts. But uh, Matt and Pat, if you'd like to say a few things, then we'll have Brad close the night in prayer. Wow. It's great to be here tonight. Thank you so much for all of your friendship and your support. Um, most of all, it's just good to be alive <laughs> at this part of this, and I just love all you guys. I'm going to miss you, but I don't think we're going away. We'll be around to see you. You know how many times that I screwed up and just done my thoughts and not God's thoughts and just done wrong and you know yeah. This coach, this soccer coach here that he talked about was uh, he's a duck out of water. I've never felt like a soccer coach. I mean I'm I was a wrestling coach. I was a good wrestling coach. <laughs> You know, God had another plan for me, and I was fortunate enough that I had the support of my family that I was willing to say, yes, Lord. But uh, I, I can just think back. I think about all the times I made mistakes. You know, in 1981, I caught the Kip National Championship. Uh, I mean, he, he, was, he was in the finals, and he had ripped his ribcage out, and he had not wrestled for three weeks going into the national finals, and he just dummy his moves. And uh, he made it all the way to the finals, and then he didn't want to take his ribcage. He just, like, he wanted to win so bad. And I just, I let him talk me out of it, and he didn't take it. And I mean, boy, he's up seven, seven points going into the second period, and he out with his his ribcage, and he had a default. <coughs> he defaulted a freshman that went on and won the national championship four times, one of the second four times national championships. So, from Oklahoma, uh, the boy was from, but, uh, you know, it, look, soccer is a sport, it's uh, wrestling, it was just, it's a love-hate affair, I mean, you know, you just, uh, it's success and failure, but um, when I came into to, to soccer, I knew that God had called me here, I, I knew that that's where the Lord wanted me, and uh, I just said, Lord, you know, you've got to be the head coach, you, you, you know, I, I'm the coach of the boys, I just, you've got to do it for him, you know, you got to protect him. So Zeke, when there is no answer, back with the head coach, I'm just talking inside, Lord, I've got to find an answer for this boy. And I know he went to the head coach and talked to the head coach that the right win from would come in those situations uh, in that. But, you know, the Lord provides, he provides Paul Gizzi and Eric Schultz and all the different gifts. He provides the Brad Biggies and the Bob Thomases and, and guys that came in, and, and when you think of the ministry and the change and the impact on it, it was a chapel at the right time. J.P. Moreland's chapel on Friday was phenomenal. 
see the wisdom that came out of that chapel. And I felt, and I, I'm so inadequate as a leader on the field compared to the wisdom that was coming out of that chapel. And life changing uh, joy can come out of that experience. And it just seems like the, the toy conference came at the right time, or the Paul Gibby stepped up at the right time, or the Brad Davy. And so, you know, when we talk about who's the next guy, and the fear, and the trembling, that there is a God, and he's in control, and he has a plan, and there is a man there for you. And if he is not the right head coach, the real coach is behind him. And, and he's your coach, and he's your father, and he'll take care of you, and he'll bless you. All we have to do is step up those plates and in the bottom line and have the courage to fail. And that's what we have to do, God, to be faithful and trust the Lord for where he uh, brings you to us. I'm excited about Viola soccer. I do, and I've told the guys and parents that I really think we're on an up. I think sports tend to go up and down, and I think Viola's ready to, to put more money into athletics because of the increasing role <coughs> and getting the women's programs equalized. And, just, uh, I respect Viola's overall leadership and their overall commitment to education. And, and athletics is a number one budget line at Viola, but that's caused us to maybe work harder and to have the right kind of people here and to achieve the things that maybe are important. And, and, and we can continue to do that. And uh, if you men have that vision and realize that God is in control and that He's the center of your life, then great things can happen. You might not feel adequate, and you might not make the right decisions, but God will put the Paul Gibbies there, and he'll put the very shoulders in the mat there in your life. He'll put the right chapel at the right time, and the right partner in your life to help you here and make it through. And I thank you so much. You've contributed. I, I feel like everybody <coughs> cheated. I feel like I've got, I'm, I'm the one that has been blessed through this process. And that's the hard part of quitting, too. If you ask me one reason, the time is right. Because I just feel that God said this is right, and I need to be here. And I just thank you for being a part of this really important year of my life and change in my life. And uh, I trust God for the future, and I thank God for uh, so much in this family here. Watch out, Brian. I got five. <laughs> I think you left out it. Thanks so much, Paul, and the gift is to really cherished and it's good because uh, I don't think we've had too many vacations <laughs> lately just because we've chosen to. Yeah, but thanks for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thanks so much. You parents, we haven't said that much tonight, but parents is probably one of the reasons that Biola's had the, the kind of emphasis or the kind of results that you did tonight. Um, we just really have parents that you were a part of the program when it was time and a stepping back when it was time too. That's hard, probably the hardest part. Just to, just to trust. Just to trust uh, maybe even when it's a wrong decision, to trust that God would do this and to trust the man that God's put in your child's life. That's hard to do. I just think if we had those kind of parents in our program going back and I can think of, of key, key parents all the way through and they impacted the screen. And it just seems that God not allowed all the boys to have their parents here, but the right one always seemed to be here, and they seemed to minister and have been a part of it. So I thank all of the parents and all the ones that aren't here over the years for really made this uh, program what it is and trust you. God's hand will continue to be. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you. God, tonight we rejoice in your sovereignty and that uh, from the beginning of time that you plan all of our paths for you here tonight, that uh, we come in contact with uh, Coach Orr and his family, and that we would all be blessed by this family tonight. Thank you for uh, humble servants, God, that we want your will to be done, and we ask that uh, your will will continue to be done as you take uh, Coach Orr and his family to uh, different places and uh, pray that you would continue, that they would continue to have an impact on those around us, God. I pray that. Uh, the impact that coaches had on us, that we would give that to others, that we would um, not hold it to ourselves, that we would bless others with what we do here, and it's all from you, and we rejoice in that. We pray for the 
the man that you bring into the position that and that you your blessings upon him that uh, he gives you a man of character and that uh, above all he wants to glorify you uh, through this program and through what, what he can do here by the way so we thank you tonight for all that was said and uh, for this season and uh, ask that we would go out in your name your name amen Uh, reminders, uh, Coach Orr, who do they see if they want a video? Okay, lay five down here. Also, guys, don't take off without uh, your, your tour information, and uh, have a great night.